99.999% of your drawings should be ugly. And that's because it's the best way to get better at drawing. Okay, so nowadays, I'm a big advocate of my iPad and Apple Pencil. It's a revolutionary tool. But there's something that every artist needs. Something much simpler and cheaper. And that's a good old sketchbook. And if you talk to other artists, you'll see that most of them have accumulated a mountain of sketchbook throughout their lives. It's probably tucked away in a cellar or under their bed. I was the same. When I was young, I didn't get into much trouble because all I needed was a large piece of paper and a box of crayons to really keep me busy. Also a sketchbook and some crayons, well, they were actually quite a cheap hobby to fund. I remember my mom would take me to the dollar store and for less than $5, I was ready to sit on the floor with my new art material and draw for the afternoon. Let me explain why you can never replace the mighty pen and paper combo and also why it's so important for artists to have a sketchbook as part of their art journey. First lesson is to draw for yourself, meaning fill up your pages with doodles that are not meant to be seen by others. First, this will alleviate some of your pressure to create art and perform. So draw whatever you want and whatever makes you happy. For example, I like to draw people and drawing buildings or objects doesn't bring me joy. I'm okay to suck at drawing architectural structure, but I do want to get better at drawing people. And if you're lacking inspiration and you're not sure about what to draw, go online and practice by sketching through references drawing whatever you would like to practice. So I usually browse Pinterest for street fashion, photography, practicing anatomy, clothing, and sometimes movement as well. Because what you need is to make mistakes and create loads of horrible, disgustingly ugly drawings. Yeah, forget about these sketchbook challenges where everyone shares their beautiful sketchbook art. Ugh. You'll get there someday, but that's not the most important. Most artists will tell you that they have in their childhood home a mountain of ugly sketchbooks lying under their bed. And in fact, that even today, we artists keep on making ugly doodles. And we're proud of that because that's a sign of discipline leading to improvement. And you'll see revisiting these sketchbooks is also super cool so we can see how much we've evolved throughout the years. And that's why I keep them. Another tip to help you stay disciplined is to use a clock. I put a Pomodoro timer on to help me stay focused. So let's say I set up 25 minute session to really focus without any interruption and five minutes to rest. And make sure you use those five minutes. A good warm up exercise for artists is fast sketching. This is when you draw the outline of your subject for 15, 60 seconds. The exercise is really to get familiar with recognizing and drawing the outline of the subject very quickly. Then you can move up to longer poses. I would say anything about five minutes to infinity to add all the details and rendering you need. On the web, you can look for a website where you can sketch references and even set a timer for each drawing pose. And if you want to talk about sketchbooks, here we are. For paper, you can use anything. For example, you can get a really nice sketchbook that inspires you to draw or get a super ugly functional sketchbook so you're not afraid to ruin it. I personally like ugly sketchbooks. It's a great way to avoid the syndrome of the white sheet of paper. You know, when artists are paralyzed to get a new page dirty. So get an ugly and cheap sketchbook. And you know, I've been guilty of spending way too much money purchasing more and more sketchbooks. So now I do the opposite. I go through my stuff and look for old, unfinished sketchbooks to practice my drawing. For example, brown newspaper is ideal to practice your sketches from observation exercises. It's cheap and it comes in big format too. I also use big blocks of watercolor papers whenever I want to experiment with 
coloring my sketches quickly. Very useful. A bit pricier, but the paper is better quality. And that's also why I draw on both sides whenever I'm simply practicing different techniques. In terms of sizes, I like a large notebook. So A4, standard office paper size, or A3 is perfect. I've always dreamt of carrying with me a small notebook where I would discreetly sketch people, but it never happened. So I'm not a fan of the small, tiny, portable sketchbook as I end up using it mostly to write notes. My default is to draw comfortably at home. So I do prefer to draw on bigger surfaces. The good thing about drawing on paper is that you need to commit to each line you draw. Unlike digital art, which is so amazingly great at letting you delete, undo, and restart anything, anytime, drawing on paper forces you to look at your mistake and deal with them. So as we talk about taking away the power to undo, let's not use pencils nor erasers. In that case, what better tool than a nice ink pen? So here are my recommendations. For fast sketching, the Sakura Pigmagraphic one is my favorite. You can also buy different sizes as a set, but this one has been my default lately, mostly because it allows me to make rough drawings and is great for shading and filling large areas quickly. Plus, it's super smooth and it doesn't bleed through my sketchbook. Another option is the Uniball iFine Roller Pen, which you can find anywhere as an office supply pen, and mostly available in blue or black. I like this one a lot because the release of the ink is quite smooth and you can really draw nice and uniform lines. And finally, my favorite of the moment, the Lamy Fountain Pen. Although Honestly, it wasn't love at first sight. I had some initial problem, mostly with putting the cartridge and the ink drying, but we're good now. Honestly, I love holding it as it has small dents on the side and it really allows for a better ergonomic grip. I also love the way the inks run on the paper, super smooth, but watch out because it does bleed through your sketchbook. So in the end, what are the skills you get from sketching? Well, in my opinion, there are quite a few benefits. <laughs> Whoops. First, you will experience the feeling of drawing on a piece of paper, listening to the sound of your pen scratching the surface of the paper and leaving its mark. My favorite type of therapy, really, nothing beats that. Also, you show dedication because having a lot of used sketchbooks is proof that you showed up and committed to your art practice. It's also a great way to create a healthy habit of drawing every day. It's self-care, really. Creating your own visual journal where you don't have the added pressure of social media on top of that. Now, by drawing on sketchbooks, you learn to observe and to draw. You train your eye, your imagination, and at the same time, super important, your hand. So for example, holding the pen a certain way for repeated hours is quite enjoyable. And it's also a feeling that I know other artists experience. So remember our faithful iPad? It's really a great device for creating beautiful digital illustration. The best thing about it, it really the ability to try different type of brushes, infinite amount of colors, add as many layers as needed, and the ability to press reset anytime you want, and start over. But by sketching, you're not afraid to put down that first stroke on your sketchbook, potentially ruining that virgin piece of paper. And that's okay, because the exercise of drawing on paper becomes less and less intimidating, even as we know that it cannot be undone because sketching allows us to embrace our mistakes over and over again, taking your art to the next level. And that's really how we evolve and become better in any discipline. So my final words are, be cheap, cheerful, 
Avoid perfection and really just do it. Stay creative.